If you have been following the tech side of YouTube in the past few months, you probably have heard of the new M1 Mac computers. And in this video, we will be going over my experience with the M1 Mac mini as a GH5 user and a content creator. If you're new here, I'm Jake McHugh, and this channel is all about making better videos. I do gear reviews and test videos to help you determine what gear you need to make the videos you wanna achieve. If that's something that may interest you, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. So prior to this computer, I was using a 2014 MacBook Pro and it was becoming a little long in the tooth and was struggling to keep up to the speed I wanted while editing. So I decided that it might be time to update. I was a little skeptical at the time since these are the first generation of the new Apple Silicon, but I thought it was a better investment since it would be a little bit more future-proof compared to using my MacBook Pro still. I also wanted to see how fast this computer actually was when editing and oh boy, is it nice. Nice. With coming from my 2014 MacBook Pro, it might have been my experience with that laptop that made the Mini seem so much quicker compared to let's say if I was more used to a recent MacBook, but when editing Final Cut Pro on my old laptop, I was able to edit 4K 8-bit footage and a 4K timeline as a breeze. Once I started using the GH5 and its 10-bit files, it became a little bit more challenging and at times I would have to transcode the files to ProRes and then once again it would play back smooth as butter. The problem with this was depending on the project size, this could take loads of time to transcode all the files. With the M1 Mac Mini, it cuts way faster than what my old MacBook ever could, and that's even without transcoding the footage, which is insane considering its price in my opinion. It's almost as if I was working with 1080p footage. Speaking of the price, I got the base storage model at 256 gigabytes, but I upgraded the RAM to 16 gigabytes, which brings the total cost to $900, which considering for a Mac is not bad at all. But after trading in my MacBook, I only spent a total of $570. The reason I went with the 16 gigabytes of RAM is that it's always better to have more when video editing. And like all more modern Macs, you can't upgrade the RAM later on. So it's best to future-proof your setup as much as you can afford to. The reason that I went with the Mac mini versus another MacBook was that the previous one never really left this room. I only edited on it down here for the most part, and I never really edited on the go. And if I wanted that portability factor for like surfing the web or personal use, I have my iPad for that. Now I want to touch base on some of the common problems I see about this computer. First, for the Bluetooth issues, I didn't really have any problems at first. The mouse and keyboard I use are just generic ones from Amazon and they both connected with no issues when setting up the computer for the first time. Maybe about a month and a half in, I started to notice a few times where there might be an issue, mostly with my mouse and once with my headphones if I recall correctly, but it really hasn't been as bad as I read or heard and it never really caused me any issues. After the recent 11.2 update for Big Sur, I haven't experienced any issues at all and overall I'm decently confident with the Bluetooth of my Mac mini and the fact that I haven't really been able to tell you wholeheartedly that it's been giving me issues I think speaks to the fact that it really hasn't bothered me a whole lot. I've had no issues with my monitors as well but I only use 1080p monitors because color accuracy is more important to me than resolution and I use an HDMI with one and a DVI to USB-C on the other so I might not be the best example of a monitor setup for this computer. For the lack of ports I use a USB 3 hub to plug in all my drives and other components and I get some decent write speed at about 365 megabits per second with the Samsung T5 going through the hub but you would definitely get a lot faster speeds going from a Thunderbolt hub or port. For keeping a clean look to my desk setup I found this really cool vented drawer from Lee Zavitt's channel but I went with one that's a little bit deeper so it's easier to store my hub and all my drives. I do think that there's a good possibility that the lack of Bluetooth issues that I have is due to the mini being under the desk and in the drawer giving a good distance from my devices without any interference. You may wonder if the Mac mini gets warm and has its fans kick on at all while being in the drawer and to my surprise I've never heard the fans once on this thing and it's cool to the touch darn near every time. Now the vented part of the drawer does play a role in this somewhat but I personally think that this is a very powerful but more than anything an efficient machine and that's why it never heats up. Coming from my previous MacBook Pro which had the fans running all the time my room does stay a few degrees cooler because I don't have an extra heater on my desk anymore. If you would like to see a whole video of my M1 Mac mini desk setup make sure to let me know in the comments. Overall for what this computer is capable of, this is an amazing value for the money, and this is only the first generation or entry level of computers for Apple Silicon. So it's pretty exciting to see what they might come out with in the future. So that's going to do it for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.